All right, on with the tri board meeting. I think our, our big big topic for this meeting was our, our top 10 areas of concern with the budget and how we're moving forward. So who wants to throw out first? We don't have enough revenue to sustain services. It's like one top concern for me. I mean, this lack of revenue to expand, sustain existing services that I want to expand. <laughs> So the piggyback on that, my, one of my concerns is we don't, we actually haven't said what we're going to set our policy is for reserves. And, and we try to keep a certain amount and whatever free cash is left over, we try to slide it in. But then we, we heard from our bonding council and I um, always get this mixed up, that there is, there is a number they like to look at. I think it was like, and I, I wrote it down, it's 5% of the budget. 5% yeah. of uh, revenue. 5% of revenue or 5% of the? 5% of uh, revenue should be uh, part of your uh, uh, stabilization or an amount in stabilization equivalent to 5%. Of your revenue? Yeah. Not, not operating expenses, revenue? No, revenue. It should be the same. Oh, that's a good well, thing. So, so, <laughs> so, so if, revenue, budget, yeah. if revenue drops, our, our stabilization should, our reserve fund should drop? drop? We're at 11 percent right now, so yeah. we exceed the benchmark. Right. What are we calling yeah. reserves? This is for stabilization. Oh. Okay, you're not talking about that. You're not talking, talking about, about okay. yeah, yeah. We've, we've been through this over the years as to where we should be and you know what's in excess and what's sufficient. When you toss out a percentage, so if you're taking 5 percent of $10 million and saying that's what we should have in in stabilization, I guarantee you that that will not handle many, many emergencies. The dollar amount that we came up with, the $2 million, was to fund something substantial in the town. And you can see with how some of the court cases go, you know, what, what, what's a good dollar amount? You know, what's a good dollar amount to cover um, a catastrophe on the, on the dam or a catastrophe on Route 9? You know, you know, say that $2 million wouldn't get you too far. So, well, except, but I think, Howard, if we go back to where we were at in our spending at the time that we discussed that $2 million figure, I think it was in the context of that percentage. And it's just our, our budget has grown over the years since then. It's taken us a while to build up to that $2 million figure. And it, and it, it just seems... It used to be 2.3, and we've taken it down and down and down, and we finally come back. I think we're at a low of about 1.6, mm -hmm. and we got it back to 2 million. That was one of our goals a few years ago. But, I mean, just intellectually, a, a percentage targeted makes a lot more sense to me because, first of all, you wind up with a figure, $2 million in today's dollars. We hit a period of hyperinflation, whatever. Um, suddenly that $2 million doesn't have the spending power it did. So whereas if you're tying it to a percentage of what you're actually spending in the budget, um, and it's a pretty accepted target, I mean, it, I think it does allow for ebbs and flows. And I don't think anybody, I haven't heard anybody suggest we take money out of any reserve funds. I think the question is coming. We did last year. We took police cruisers out of it. Well, we had, we had a health insurance or a, a claim that we took out of the out of stabilization. We did, right? In but years meaning past, we've taken three or four hundred thousand, uh, two to three hundred thousand dollars out of reserve, uh, out of stabilization. Let me rephrase that. I don't think anybody's suggesting that we would now start relying on reserves that and, and just shift the argument that we've been having about free cash to stabilization fund and say, well, we'll just borrow against that for a while. I don't think anybody for operating for for, for operating, operating is, right. is suggesting that. Yeah, um, I don't think anyone ever yeah. has. But I do think that the question becomes when there's an argument, you know, should we add to stabilization or not? There may be times where it's appropriate that no, it, those, those dollars are actually better spent elsewhere. So I, I think that's why having that's a percentage. So so if we're saying if we're saying two million was where we wanted to be, and that's roughly like you say, but that was two years ago, right? So that's fourteen percent, right? So if we, we say well, let's just round it off because I like round numbers. Yeah. Let's just round it to fifteen percent is what we want then that gives us the number we're going to shoot for to add to stabilization based on the budget every year. So then that's a number, so as we talk about we don't have enough money, 
So we set the fact that, okay, we're going to take this much every year and put in stabiliz stabilization. Um, and that's we just. Can't, we can't afford to take money and put it into stabilization with what our departments are running at right now. You can't even think about that at this point. He's just giving a hypothetical. I'm just giving the hypothetical. Thank God it's hypothetical. You're just about <laughs> giving me a heart attack here. Really? Yes. We don't have a defibrillator. No. That's good. Uh, Let me go. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is we need, I think You've got to sign a note for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to have that number in it. This is what we're shooting for. This is why we're shooting for it, just so people know. And then as we have, and we have money, we're building that, that's what's going in there. So if we have more by some fluke, say we become the restaurant capital of the Western Massachusetts, and we get this huge influx of, of money coming in, we can work on that, but then we can take the rest and put towards this. I'm just kind of, that's one of the things I think would help us. Go ahead. To, jump to in. clarify, because I think that some of the some of the remarks are not um, are, are are coming from different places. When you're talking about putting money into stabilization and you're reacting as if that's something new and different, I think we're talking about the meals tax that goes into capitalization. That's, so that's, no, the two that's, that's a different that's stabilization. That's my next one. I know it's a different one, but it's a reserve. It is a reserve. That's what my question before was. What is our, what are we talking about with yeah, our reserve? Yeah, define what you're right. talking about. Exactly. Are we talking about now? I think our policies that we develop and how we all feel about them are different for the stabilization versus the capital stabilization. Mm -hmm. Correct. We purposely did that with elastic revenue because right. the sales I, and meals tax ebbs and flows. I, exactly. So right um, now I'm, it's I'm just you know, where are we going? <laughs> right. are, are, is that what you're going to you're trying to tie it back into the meals tax? Okay. I think he's trying to tie it into, we're talking about a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And if we, you know, let's, let's take OPEB, for example. We have, we have a plan in place that we're trying to follow this year, next year, and a year after. I think what Guilford's saying, okay, is let's set a policy for stabilization as a goal to meet these goals over a five-year period. Now if something exponential comes up in year three and you have to take it up on its own merits and make a decision based on it, that's fine. But at least you have a general policy that everybody is aware of mm -hmm. that we're going to try, you know, in 2018, we want stabilization to be this. In 2020, we want it to be here. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you're talking yes. about. Right. And then what and it also does, is it. The, using your example, Brian, is so Howard has the, the, the major water main break on wherever. But you have water reserve, anything, right? Well, yeah, yeah. some non, non water or sewer related things. So you wind up having to take collapse. a chunk of money right. out of stabilization. And then immediately, what's going to happen is because that, and, and let's say we fall below our target, now we know that we got to put it back we've in. We've got to put it back in, and it becomes an automatic priority for the next budget cycle. Because they really have no way of telling people yeah. what that number is or why we came up with that number. I, I mean, when we're talking. You to clarify when you're talking about which stabilization account you're talking about. Well, that's my next couple of things. Mm -hmm. It's the same argument we have with the school choice account. I mean, we all sat right. here and argued with, with whether it's, you know. That, that's another whoever. reserve. Water it's reserves another reserve. Another reserve. So but reserves is another what's reserves. the logic behind so. it? How did you come up with the number? And yes. that had to be articulated mm -hmm. for people to say, okay, that makes sense. Because, yes, we don't have enough money to spread around right now. Mm -hmm. So people are going to ask, well, how do you come up with this number for this? How do you come up with this number for this? So I was thinking that one of the, my top concerns is we need to, at least for the bigger, this big one is, mm -hmm. this is why we do this one. Mm -hmm. And then there's a couple other ones in there that we need to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Are we trying to resolve it or just come up with our no, list? No, we're coming up with our list. We just come up with the list, yeah. We only have 15 minutes left. We're just doing our list. All right, so mommy, I'll throw one out. I've got my list here. Um, I'm just going to, just the line item. Um, it, in the budget, it's called employee benefits. But the sustainability and long-term funding of that line item. So that combined, that's uh, OPEB, it's retirement, it's... Medical, life insurance is a small piece, but it's that whole very significant line item. And, um, you know, I really think that we need to have 
very clear policies. Um, it's something that needs to be addressed every year. You know, in, in non-municipal life, companies go out and they're constantly drilling and drilling and drilling into um, that line item to make sure that, number one, that the employees are taken care of, but that it's a sustainable figure. And I don't think that we've done an adequate job um, really tearing that apart the way that we need to. And it's complicated because it's tied into union contracts and we know it's hard. Because it's so hard, we tend to kind of shy away from it and go in a different direction. So I don't think we can afford to keep doing that. So how do you want to, what do you want to call it? Short, short title. Employee I mean, just employee benefits. Employee benefits. Just as a Unsustainable. General. Unsustainable employee benefits. Sustainability and funding. Oh, Make yeah. sustainable. I'd, go, I, I'd say we need a policy with regard to it and, then, and how it impacts other decisions that we make in everyone's budget. When I mean, you just talk about, what well, we need five more hours in this department budget, and that's going to cost so much. Or well, this is the raise we're going to give, and it's going to cost this much. We also have to kick in how it's going to impact that other line because it, it always seems to kind of come up and surprise us. Mm -hmm. But it's it's there, it's there in the decision making as we're adding on five or ten hours or as we're hiring another part time or full time person, it's affecting the other line too. Um, and that's town wide. I mean that that um, it is town wide. It's including that's, the schools. I mean it has I would, to include the schools and I would line. say town wide policy is the key. School, town, water, sewer, so all departments, a town wide policy as to how these decisions are made and Carrying the changes town in employees. Hmm? Town employees. Yep. Period. Yep. And that would be your insurances also, which would be, mm -hmm. yeah, whether it be your liability or your buildings or whatever that you know have a chunk of change that we pay out every year for for that also. Mm -hmm. Well, insurance has its own line item, so you mm -hmm. want to piggyback that with employee benefits line item? Um, I think embedded in it, there's health insurance and everything's in there. Well, there's, yeah, I think you're talking about liability and uh, property insurance. Mm -hmm. in, oh, that has addition. its own. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the liability insurance is in the in the 100 level budget, uh, and then the police fire accident are this in the uh, benefits line. That's probably the part that you're talking about is the police fire accident. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know whether this fits into a larger one or a small one, but um, my weekly payroll instead of weekly payroll. That's in, in, in itself, it's something that can save uh, time and money and expense but also as a larger policy of what else have we got out there that we are sort of uh, a little extra work is going in and we're spending some more money on something that doesn't need to be done or that can be done more efficiently if, if it was done, um, well, I think that's the easiest one to get handled on, but I don't know whether it's But if we, had, if we had a policy too where um, even weekly, is it mandated that everybody be under um, direct deposit? Because that certainly would be a plus another, also another that you would savings. have to cut yeah. checks that you could just do a complete deposit and I know other places have made that mandatory. They, they're not writing checks anymore to individuals. Mm -hmm. So that might be something to look at too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I don't even know if those, uh, it's something that's, uh, you know, I don't know what the timeline is on this. I don't even know if it's something that you can't, just as a select board say, we're going to um, bi-weekly pay payroll as of April 1, July 1. I don't know those answers, but I... I think it has to be negotiated. I don't think so. Uh, this I don't believe the school system is a good decision. We take over. I think it's, it's yeah. change, of, change of work condition. It's impact bargaining. Yeah, we, we hear that, and then we talk with individual departments, and they go, no, it's not us. Yeah. Uh, so I think we have... <laughs> I, what? It's the unions. No, they say it's not them. Well, then we'll ask. And then we need to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, right. This, this is why easy. I'm saying yeah. someone's got to, this has to be looked at because yeah. it's always like, mm. right. The other two northern cities I've worked for, cities and towns I've worked for, they've always negotiated it. And there's always been certain groups of people who staunchly hold out against it. Well, let's find out who they are and see what we can deal with them. It's, it's, it's a, so it we'll has to get on the table. We'll start with yeah. the negotiation okay. side and see how it goes. 
Well, can I dovetail onto that? Because I have one that's related, just a little bit broader to the payroll. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of infrastructure, you know, we've talked about deferred maintenance on the buildings now. Um, you know, uh, it was brought up earlier tonight about the um, concern about the water and sewer lines. Uh, you know, so that level of infrastructure. But the other piece of infrastructure that I think we have, um, we're sorely lacking in is the technology side. Um, we saw, you know, the schools brought forward an article uh, because they didn't have any wireless capability in the elementary school. Um, our buildings can't talk to each other right now. So the, I think the inefficiency that abounds in the, the town departments is outrageous in this day and age. Um, we have not invested in the technology, the software. You know, we hear VADAR's not working and it has nothing to do with the VADAR software. We find out that we have an operating system that, you know, uh, Microsoft dropped support on mm -hmm. a year ago. But it's not, you know, we don't have the funding and the budget to deal with this stuff because I don't think we really have a, a technology plan. And I, I don't know, David's talked about this before. That we really need to have a technology plan that encompasses hardware, software, and again, put funding in place to sustain it so we're not going to town meeting asking for, you know, large um, expenditures to cover it every few years. The investment is part of it, but the other part of it too is having a policy on when an investment is being made by an individual department. Is it in line with the others? Right. to make sure that the decisions made in the different corners of the town are consistent with and they are going to fit together. I know that different departments have different iTech support. I know that when we had the problem with VADAR, um, at least I don't know how long the town had it, but I couldn't log on and we have to go directly through VADAR and, and get something fixed on your computer. Um, in, individual departments were having to handle it on their own. I was having to make a call on their own. Then there's other departments in, have in town that have their own tech support. Is that, is that the best way we should be handling it? Or should we have this, these all consolidated through one direction and have it not be the town accountant? You know, she's not a tech support person, but we, you know, where's our tech support funneling through? Where are these decisions being made? Um, I think some of that's just organizational. It's not necessarily spending more money. It's being prepared for your next, when you spend your money that you're spending it um, the right way. But we're not in line with the policy that is going to be more efficient in the long run for the town. Isn't that right? We're not, we don't have a town-wide network. No, no. We don't have a town-wide what? We don't have a network. No. So, I mean, well, this, this is like... gets me crazy. <laughs> well, I know, I just put it in my top ten. I was going to go crazy. I'm just... <laughs> After this week, it worked. Yeah, yeah. Great. <laughs> I mean, there's a full moon out there tonight. You can all go crazy. Goes with the full moon. So I'll throw out HR as a top priority. Mm -hmm. What is human HR, resources? Human yeah. resources oh, yeah. coordination. Mm -hmm. We've done some work with uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments in order to put together a feasibility study for shared intermunicipal HR co benefits coordinator, but we need a lot more support and with respect to the HR. We have one person doing it and it's not a good situation. That person serves how many people? The whole town? Uh, well, no, that's what I want to know. Does it also cover the unions or are we talking about the non-union employees? Yeah, this, this one person okay. covers all the benefits for all employees, okay. school and municipal, in terms of employee discipline or, or, or performance issues. School takes care of their own and she takes, she alerts everybody to whatever's going on here. But it's it's a real weakness that we have here. Could easily be argued that there's an awful lot of lost productivity, legal expenses, you name it, um, just dealing with issues because people, you're doing it and you know it's a small piece of your job and it's not a focused effort. Having somebody who that's all that they do all day long, they know the laws, they make sure everybody's trained right. properly to prevent us from stepping into things inadvertently is huge. And, and you wonder too, I mean, do they, the legal expense, and it, just by finding out answers to questions, maybe the school's asking their attorney the same mm -hmm. question that the town's asking their attorney. Um, and we're, how many times are we paying for the same kind of advice, again, to get these things funneled through? I'd really like to s just see a lot more coordination of these efforts and um, be trying to ferret out these areas where we're double, triple spending. Mm -hmm. No. 
So one of my concerns, I don't know if it fits into the budget or where, <laughs> where it fits, but um, as we look at this not having enough money, um, we have a declining school population, and we're not, this is not unusual to us. I mean, Amherst is having the same thing. Frontier is having the same issue. Um, how do we, what do we do next about this? Is there something we need to be working on to see where to go next? Um, it just seems to be declining population of students, but we have the same cost. So, uh, That's why there's so much competition for choice of students. That's right. But, but yeah, but the kids are getting, there's less kids. It's just, it's just no, the kids are moving around too. Kids are moving around. No, there's physically less people of school age in this area. Well, the That's Hampshire true. County as a whole has a declining yeah. population. Yes. So, so does Franklin County. Yes. I don't think the Hadley Schools enrollment has dropped particularly since I've been in town. I think mm -hmm. it's been about 790 if you count mm -hmm. these schools. Mm -hmm. But you're making up a school, you, you keep yeah, it up a school of choice, choice right. mm -hmm. which is, we're on the good side. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had an increase this year. So, so. But to your point, I think one of the things that hopefully that we've started down the path of with these tri-board meetings is clearly the school committee and the superintendent need to be taking a very long-term view of you know, the, the future direction of the schools, and they're, they're actively watching those enrollment figures and the charter and the choice and everything. Um, and I think what's key to the whole thing is making sure that the finance committee and the select board are well aware of what is happening, if anything, um, and that we're all making sure that you're, you know, I mean, that it's your, your charge as a school committee, but staying kind of ahead of the curve on that. So to Guilford's point, we don't find ourselves in a situation where suddenly the enrollment has quietly dropped off and we're looking at brick and mortar that we can ill afford any longer. No, I don't think Hadley's in the situation. I believe it's Sunderland that realized that they were funding classrooms only for school choice in, and that mm -hmm. economically it made no sense. And that's not the way that we are still approaching school choice. We're using it where we have existing openings. Mm -hmm. So then the other question is, if we're actually a, a magnet for school choice, mm -hmm. what can we do to be a bigger magnet? Mm -hmm. It's marketing. <laughs> I mean, or, we could or, see a significant increase. Like, um, Dr. McKenzie, I think, said it went from 73 to 101. Request or so students? For the, students this year. To come. That's huge. Yeah. 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 So, so then that's just another, so I see that as an issue in the budget. So do we, I mean, the request from the school, we haven't had it yet. That's a nice number. We have a 2% increase as you requested. Oh, okay. Household is more. <laughs> Good, I'm happy now. Well, so then I'll just throw out, because we're gonna be running out of time. Um, I also have revenue maximization on my list because I think we've, we've it's good that we're spending time talking about expenses we need to, but um, we never spend any time talking about economic development, and the only thing we ever talk about is, uh, what's the new growth figure look like for next year? Oh, it's $100,000 again, and then every year we say, oh, there's no new growth, not going to be any new growth, and oh, it's $100,000 again. And so, liquor licenses. <laughs> we have the liquor licenses. No. And so, you know, even this whole thing with the, um, the, you know, the meals and tax revenue, I mean, really getting a much better projection on where some of these revenues are going and possibly getting creative to the extent that we can make a more focused effort to attract businesses or, you know, entities that are going to continue to provide um, revenue growth for us and not just kind of let it all happen, just be more active in that. So my last one is back to the, my first one again. Is is I think we truly need to because we have we are growing, even though we're not maximizing our revenue, we're not looking at ways to increase the tax base. We are growing, and our meals tax money is growing. So I'm, I'm thinking we need to take a 
bigger look at that and mm -hmm. say, you know, maybe we need to set up, it's, it's revenue, mm -hmm. treat it as revenue, and then set a figure for capital over here that we want to spend so much on capital. And, and then it's not so much a capital stabilization account, it's revenue, and we take so much from here and we fund the capital we decide to do. Um, and, and stop having this special revenue stabilization, the stabilization account for capital over here. So that's, it's revenue. We want, this is this numbers, 10% of our revenue we're gonna spend on capital. And that's what our goal is. Um, and goal, goals are not what you do immediately, goals are what you work to. I understand that. I hope everybody else doesn't tell me now I have to do 10% capital. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's something else I think uh, I, I, agree, I agree with that I think this little uh, two step that we do that we take the mail's tax and we put it in and then we take it out we spend it uh, you know I, I don't know why we just don't take that and spend it on the capital items of the year I'd like to see a much more direct route for spending that money on the capital mm -hmm. if, if, if that's what you're if, if I'm understanding you correctly yeah I think there's a rigidity to that that might not need to be there anymore. I mean, if, if it really so is increasing. It's a safety valve. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, that you might be able to look at it differently mm -hmm. and have a, a real policy to it. It's not mm -hmm. just whatever comes in and that line goes here. And, and there's other funds of capital we spend. I mean, we spend money from the CPA on, on capital. You know, we get grants for capital. That we didn't used to have. Yeah, and those are all things that, that go into that percentage of what we're spending on capital. It's not so much. We're just taking the meals tax and put it over here. And this year we had three hundred thousand. Last year we had two fifty, and and it gets you more of a chance to say the plan. So you, our goal is ten, and we can only fund five right now, or four. Then we're laying out what our capital expenses are for buildings, for equipment, and we have more of a number to use. Not okay. It's only two fifty. It's okay. Go, go. <laughs> the benefit of the rigidity is that it doesn't get sucked into the budget. That's yeah. just part one. But that's that's another discussion. Well, I mean, we just have a discussion that doesn't but necessarily make it. But yeah, that's where policy, policy to town. make it a policy. And so, and policies, think, a investment policy. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's excellent. Yeah, I love policy. <laughs> and I don't think we can do any of this without a more concerted effort towards fiscal or uh, financial transparency. But we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about the MMA conference. Okay. <laughs> um, contracts in general, whether it's union, utilities, and that's just another something I'm throwing out there for town-wide coordination of our efforts, um, fuel prices, electricity rates, whatever, the, you know, the school, the town working together, all, make sure all the town buildings, very, these various contracts, are we approaching them? the same way. <coughs> well, we let, the, we let Representative John Seibach take some of our tribe board time. Since, so he has 15 minutes on the select board agenda, so we want to go 10 more minutes. Sure. I'll bring up, I'll bring up an individual one. I think it's critical that we evaluate our public safety budgets um, for overall efficiency. I think, I don't think you can necessarily uh, fix that in a year or two but I think if if you're really putting together a five-year budget you have a new chief of police and you have a fire chief um, I think if we sit down and we strategize with those two chiefs you can find achievable goals over a five-year period to make those two departments more efficient and fiscally responsible So we made this nice list. <laughs> it's going to work. What do we want to tackle first? I guess is the next question. You might well, as, well, it's, might uh, as well start with number one. Select boards purview to make policy. We're it is. Yeah. Nice. It is, but we're all talking about this together. So <coughs> what do we think we all need to be first? Well, all think. of these policies should include all town-wide, including school. Mm -hmm policies so whether we make the policies or not they have to be conducive to 
all the departments and not just the ones that we oversee. So I think that, you know, I think we all should be in on this together if that's what we're doing. Total silence. Well, it seems like we should have a game plan for each one of these things. I mean, the, the payroll, we should be able to resolve it with a few phone calls to find out exactly, you know, what are the rules, right? I mean, do think. we or do we not have to go through the collective bargaining process if the answer is an unequivocal, absolutely, there's no way around it, well, then at least we know that that's where we're going with it. Right. Um, the human resource support, David's already been in comment, or you've got it on the agenda, I think, right? Or somewhere. Mm -hmm. right. That you've already been in conversation to the point he was just making, um, and p that could potentially come into play for the information technology as well. So maybe that needs to be on an agenda and that we can authorize him to pursue something like that, or maybe there's some other ideas. But if we have a plan for each one of the things we're talking about. Is, is everybody on direct deposit? No. 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 What are the numbers? Roughly, Joan. About 50%. That's low. Just, that's that's, really, that's, that's really good. It is? It is for all volunteer system. I mean, no one's forced to do it. 50% of the right. people want to do it, and that's good. Would it be cheaper, John, if everybody was on direct deposit? No. It wouldn't make a Why difference. Why not? Because we have to issue see. a paper. Stop. You actually don't. Also pay no, you don't have to. You actually don't. don't. Well, what is it? You must be on part of that Amherst where you get your pay stuff through the internet. Right, yeah. it's yeah. online. What's yeah, on go that? online. Yeah, yeah. That satisfies it, right? Mm -hmm. Have to see how that works too. Then I mean, there's a cost to everything. But right now, we pay for the direct deposit and we pay for the stuff mm -hmm. that they get. Mm -hmm. So it's two separate charges, and each direct deposit carries its own charge. So, so everybody gets direct. More than one. So everybody's on direct deposit gets that paper stub. Don't we use some payroll oh, yeah. provider yeah. out of okay. Worcester or something like that? That's right. right. And had, when was the last time you looked at them relative to like? Check writers and paychecks and ADP. Is that something maybe we could look at again too? Sure. You know, and then ask them. This is how we're doing it. They can usually pretty quickly tell you where you can shave off some nickels. And, and how many are weekly versus biweekly at this point? Uh, we have approximately. Okay, range is what I say about seventy-five weekly and one hundred and forty. And those 75 are on duty? It's no. That's your town hall employees, your library. That's all the other departments, non-school. The so unions are not weekly? They are weekly. They're part of the weekly. Oh, okay. all right. Yeah. They're, They're bi-weekly. Weekly. Yes, yes. But, what? He was asking if the schools were bi-weekly. I thought they were. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the schools they are, are bi-weekly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's DPW, police, fire. Town hall. Town hall are all weekly. Library, Libraries. Aging, and all your other departments. And they just evolved one by one. They made their own choices. There was never a policy. <laughs> I think yeah, the policy was. It's always been weekly. The policy yeah, was that's, weekly. It's always weekly. never changed. So that's something. I mean, yeah. that's something we can start working yeah. with right away. Mm -hmm. And then the employee benefits too is something that I think we're already we're starting to talk about. Yeah, talk about so. employee benefits. And mm -hmm. Actually, maybe we can take these and group them together, and we can have a little, a little more finite <coughs> list next meeting of what how they would play out, mm -hmm. and then we can send it to everybody else. So they can see what, how what we're thinking, and you can give us comments back. Sounds good. Um, all right. Are we good with our top ten concerns? Anybody else wants to? Anybody want to throw the concern and again we have no money? Um, can we look at a compensation schedule, you know, on a regular basis? What do you mean? To see whether we're paying higher, lower than whatever the, the market is. A market analysis. To see where we should be, what we're doing. You mean like for health benefits and stuff? Salaries. Mm -hmm. Salaries. I think that fell under wage scale that we were supposed to be doing, didn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just another word for 
however you want to phrase it. I think that was in the works, and I think that's where, again, HR comes into play on getting some of this done with the policy and things that we, so now you're touching on that one too, which is, I think, a good idea to do. The schools gather that regularly. You also gather all your... Wasn't the money appropriated for a salary study already? It was. There had been, yeah. But didn't we just find that Hampshire County and Franklin County have an awful lot of these things available? Well, they have the salaries, but then again, you have to look at the sure. total compensation. Sure. You know, we pay a certain percentage of health care. Some people pay me another percentage of health care. All I'm saying is that it never seems to go beyond that step. I know. Yeah, that's how we sit here year after year. That's what we talked about last time, is we need to get the other parts, too. I mean, you say a COLA is 2%. Well, COLA isn't 2%. I mean, if you're strictly looking at COLA, it's about 0.8%. But we have it factored in at 2%. And there's no real discussion about that. It's just 2%. Yeah, so OK. Yep. All righty. So we'll kind of group these together and send out. And then the things we know we're working on now, we'll write down we're working on. And then the things we or left loose, we need to decide among ourselves and communicate what we want to do as our next task, which one, what we want to tackle next, and put them kind of in an order is the way I think we need to go next. Or if we want to break them up. I think we should break them up. And see who, some people can work on some, some people can work on another one. Mm -hmm. All right. And then our next chai board meeting, do we want to do a, a middle of the month meeting or do we want to stay with the first of the month? Well, we still didn't talk about three pretty important um, items that yeah. were on the agenda tonight because we ran out of time. So recognizing how much everybody loves to get together, <laughs> it seems like we should. Hmm? The school committee is already coming on the 18th. Is that your budget? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So maybe we could tack on a tri-board to that. Mm -hmm. Do we want to do a 30-minute one instead of doing a whole hour? Or do we want to? Well, I mean, we're talking about the reorganization status on the treasurer collector position. We're talking about the... Well, we just talked on that tonight when John was here. I mean, it, clearly that we have to take it to town meeting. Oh, that was for that was an update. The update right. is, is that we've sent out the appointment letters. So mm -hmm. everyone who was volunteered mm -hmm. to be on the committee... Um, should have their appointment letter, and we have to go and get sworn in. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. did you? Did Linda, yeah. did, you, oh, did you receive your appointment letter? I did. I did too. I haven't got a sworn in yet. I haven't been sworn in either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're missing a few You're people. We're not getting out of the building. Yeah. Everybody swear. <laughs> I mean, we just did it on TV, I think. So. so is that like double swearing if you do it on TV? Um, so all the letters have gone out. So then we just need to get the, uh, some get sworn in, and then we can start scheduling our first meetings. So that's where that group is. Right. And then yes, we do know special legislation. We'll have to wait if we what we decide on. If we decide to change, that's where we have to go. I, I still think we should meet at six o'clock on the 18th and commit an hour to a tri-board meeting because we have the five-year budget projection to review and discuss, and then just the FY16 in general. Mm -hmm. And it, we never get anything done in half an hour. I mean, it's a good goal, but <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't happen. And could we have <laughs> if we, and if we would go over that? I'd like um, we need the updated information. The, what came out with the pack at this time was dated September. Those uh, projections were dated September 2014, and I know that you had. Massive. Yeah, the last time we the did it was December 2nd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there's, and that plus you had the January updated revenues or something like that. Could you just look at what came out and see okay. if there's something yeah. uh, better? All right. Okay, so we're in agreement the 18th at 6? Mm hmm. Maybe we need to bring ice cream or something. <laughs> it's Ash Wednesday. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no ice cream. All right, so there we are. Thank you. It's good to see you all again. See you in two weeks. We'll get the list out to everybody, so please look it over.
<laughs> Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you. It's not worse, it's what we did do tonight.